Hi there, Paint Shop Pro users. Welcome to my site. Welcome to this video tutorial. This video tutorial is going to cover the brush variance palette in Paint Shop Pro X6. Now, the brush variance palette is how to change the dynamics of nine different brush strokes based on the pressure you apply to a pen on a tablet in Paint Shop Pro. Now, the pen on the tablet can be an Intuos Pro or an Intuos or a Graphire or a bamboo, or an Intuos 5, or an Intuos 4, one of the Wacom tablets. So you have to have a Wacom tablet installed on your machine with the drivers. So I'm going to certainly get questions saying, well, can I use this with just the mouse? No, you can't. you got to have an Intuos tablet, or a uh, Intuos Pro, or one of the earlier versions of Wacom's tablets installed. Then you can take advantage of this. Now, you could always do this with the earlier versions of PaintShop Pro, but you couldn't do it very well because they weren't very exact. They weren't very refined. It was kind of like a, a gross change. If you wanted to change size or opacity, man, you know, uh, there'd be maybe two choices in there that it would do. Now it's infinite. It's really great. It's one of the really good things of this new version. I think um, Corel has really hit a home run with this uh, latest version of Paint Shop Pro. Yeah, everything about it seems to be cool and good. Okay, let's uh, let's look at this. So the Paint Shop Pro Brush Variance Palette. That's a lot of that's a lot of words, right? This is the Brush Variance Palette. As you can see, it's got color blend, hue, saturation, lightness, size, opacity, thickness, rotation, and density. Some of them are useful, some of them not. And each one of them has a drop-down menu, and there's a whole bunch of other things you can do in there. Primarily, I'm going to work with pressure because that's more important to me than than the other things at this point. But, you know, it's the others are there. So I've got color blend set to change with pressure, and these are my colors. So I've got a brush. So if I start off, I get that ugly background color. As I press harder and harder and harder, it goes into the foreground color. And you can see there's a place where it kind of bleeds through and, and does its mixing thing. So it's mixing in the middle there. Okay? So that's, that's color blend. Let's turn that one off. I've got the top left button of my Intuos tablet set for undo, and we'll go to hue. And now if you like to draw on paint or color line art, you're going to see something in here that's going to say, that's exactly what I want. Hue. It's kind of starting off with this light background blue, or light foreground blue, and as I press harder, it's going to go through, like, it seems like it's going through the whole gamut of colors in the rainbow until it gets back to where it started. So you've got you can you can mix these things in the middle with all the different colors coming out. So it's kind of a neat one. So you can get crazy lines going on here. So that's the hue. And I am going to undo whoops I don't want to do that. I've got the button here. Okay, so there's hue. Saturation is kind of a strange one. And I'm not sure exactly why it was put in, because it starts with this gray. And as you press harder, it goes into the foreground color. And now, I'm not sure exactly where you'd use this, but you might. This might be middle gray, for all I know. Okay, we're going to just move off of that one quickly, without looking stupid. Uh, it seems my battery wants to be plugged in, so I'll just do that quickly right here. Okay, so the next one is lightness. This one's going to start with black as the background, or as the, the original color. And as I press harder, it's going to go into that blue. So this is almost like saturation, but not quite. And this is just like middle pressure. So there you go. That's an odd one, too. It may be one that you don't use very often. But there will be someone there who will say, it's exactly what I want. It's exactly it. Uh, let's go to size, and we'll take off lightness. Size is kind of self-explanatory. Thin line, press hard, you get a thick line. This one is very useful, especially if you're doing something like the edit selection, which is the best selection tool you can get. And when you get up to the edge of your selection, you just back off the pressure and you get a thin line and you make a nice thin border and then you fill in behind it. So you have to watch the video and or check the page out on, uh, on edit selection. 
So size. Neat. Okay, take that one off. Opacity is another one that's really useful, especially with mask layers. Let's get rid of the size things here. Okay, with opacity, you see it's light. As I press harder, it gets darker and darker and darker. So opacity is cool. And it seems to be continuous. Let's try that. Stroke. Oh, interesting. That's wet look paint with full pressure. And we'll take that off. Yeah, big difference. Yeah. Okay. That's opacity. It's really useful as well. Okay, let's clean it out. And let's go to thickness. Thickness is an odd one as well. I don't know why they put it in. It seems to be, it looks like a, a calligraphy pen, right? Um, because it's thick. And then if you go in a different direction, it gets thinner. And it's, it's just a strange, strange one. So I'm not going to spend too much time on that because I can't think of any place I'd do it. And if you can, more power to you. Let me know. Rotation. This is an odd one as well. And you can't rotate a round brush and have anything visible, so I'm going to put it on a different kind of brush. Use the Alt key to make it a bit bigger. So we'll see if we can see something. Size is snuck on here. Uh, see, some of these brushes have a dynamic associated with them, and when you've got your paint, sh your uh, tablet installed, as soon as you select that brush, one of these dy dynamics will become uh, uh, the way it operates, which may sound confusing, but that's the truth. Okay, so there I changed the pressure. You can see it's kidding, giving little funny lines there. And I don't know, that's an odd one. I'm not going to worry too much about that one. Take that one off. Now density. Density, I kind of like density. With light pressure, you can see it's got some, uh, it's like adding noise. And you, you, it's not a full stroke. Okay, if I do the same thing, see how it is like that? there's no uh, density to it. Now there is. I like this one. This is neat. Okay, so those are the nine different dynamics. Now there's something in here called jitter. This thing here, jitter percent. If you think about ever being jittery, you know what you're doing. You're kind of uh, 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 moving around. You're not in one place, not in another. You're moving around too much. So let's try some of these jitters out. We'll do pressure on this, and we'll change the jitter on this one. So without without jitter, this is what we got. Now if I change this and add it to, put it about, come on, get up there about half. Now what do we got? See how it's changed it? That's how it's changed it with jitter on. So you can make it, it go crazy. Come on, get, get down here. I think I'd be able to pick that up. There we go, finally. And I'm going to do this one is kind of neat with jitter. I'll put that one back to normal. Put this one under pressure. Uh, this was the hue. And it goes through and, and ends up back where he started. Now let's add the jitter in here. Look at that. <laughs> Gives you a really cool look. So it's a uh, I'm sure you can figure out a place to put that one. Um, let's take that one off. Uh, what else? Try. Let's try density with jitter. And we'll move it up here. And we'll just leave things on. No, it doesn't do very much. A little bit, but not much. But you can play with the jitters and you get all kinds of neat things there. You've got also position jitter and impressions per step down here. So let's change this one. And let's get back. And take this one off pressure. And let's go to hue. Hue is always a kind of a fun one. Look at that. That's with position jitter. So it's an effect scattering it around. And as I press harder, you get more of the, of the uh, background colors. And, I mean, this is, this is really cool. You could do really neat backgrounds in a scrapbook page with something like that. 
So th what the thing to do is, is to just play with these. Uh, get it, get your tablet out. If you don't have one, this is a good reason to buy one. Because a, a Intuos tablet really isn't that expensive. And what it'll do for you is just amazing. So give it a shot. Have a fun with it. Uh, and, and figure out different things to do. Because uh, you will find it's a lot of fun to... Uh, there. <laughs> just to do that. So there you go. That is the Brush Variants Palette in Paint Shop Pro XX. It's a great, great palette now. It didn't work very well before, but it sure does now. Okay, so thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Visit my site if you came in through YouTube. And uh, you can read the X6 uh, review that Terry over in the UK did. And this is on that page. So thanks for your time. I appreciate it. And uh, we'll talk to you later.